Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Lawrence Welk Show, celebrating more than 60 years on television. Now sit back and enjoy the show selected especially for public television. Hello everyone, I'm Mary Lou Metzger and welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. This program first aired in 1980 and is entitled The Songs of Jimmy McHugh. You'll see Guy and Rolna singing Maggie Blues, Bobby and Elaine dancing to Lovely Lady, and Jim Turner singing I Can't Give You Anything But Love. Stay with us for a special treat at the end of this program. I'll visit with the beautiful Welk show singer Rolna English and hear her inspirational comments on her career in musical entertainment. But first, let's get things started with television's music man, Mr. Lawrence Welk. Our show this evening is a tribute to the late Jimmy McHugh, composer of countless hit songs over a period of 50 years. Right now, I feel a song coming on. Gentlemen, one, two, three, four. <laughs> studio audience again. Many of Jimmy McHugh's songs were written for the movies. Here's Ava Barber with the title tune of a 1937 Hollywood musical. You're a sweetheart If there ever was one if there ever was one, it's you. Life without you was an incomplete dream. You're my every sweet dream come true. My search was such a blind one, and I was all at sea. One. If there ever was one, it's you. My search was such a blind one, and I was all at sea. I never thought I'd find one quite so perfect. 
perfect for me. You're a sweetheart, if there ever was one. If there ever was one, it's you. If there ever was one, it's you. Thank you, Ava. Very, very nice. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's call on the band for a new Jack Please arrangement of this great old Jimmy McHugh song, Exactly Like You. Gentlemen, a one, two, three, four. Fields, gave a new twist to a familiar song from the 1800s. Let's enjoy it with Guy and Rolna. Remember those days long ago, Maggie. When all the world was young. And I love you the same as old. Now that Maggie too is a raggy too. 
no attention to the music that they play But just rock your blues away On the spot, start to sway Oh, the green grove is gone If just spoken from the heat All around I see Man. harmony, charm Every love and the day is a love and love Just cool the music that you can't refuse But I love you the same as a old Maggie When a pretty Jimmy McHugh song, Lovely Lady, and it's going to be the musical background for A Graceful Waltz by Bobby Burgess and Elaine Niverson. music, a beautiful dance. Jimmy McHugh wrote one of his biggest hits for the Blackbirds of 1928, and it's still popular today. Jim Turner, let's hear it. I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I've plenty of, baby. Dream a while, scheme a while, we're sure to find happiness. And I guess all those things you've always pined. I'd like to see you looking swell, baby. 
Diamond bracelets Woolworth doesn't sell, baby Till that lucky day You know darn well, baby I can't give you anything but love Till that lucky day You know darn well I can't give you anything but love. Back to our Jimmy McHugh show. And Ken Dela, what are you doing out there among the audience? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> You want to kick it off? Say I'm shooting high Got my eye on a star in the sky Shooting high And I'll never stop Till I get to the top Why should I? Shooting high it's you I'm after You're my lucky star I'm on a rainbow rafter Climbing up to where you are I'll never stop Till I get to that top Yes, that's I I'm shooting high Excuse me You know it's you I'm after We're killing him you're my lucky star Cause I'm on a rainbow rafter Here he comes a Climbing up to where you are I'll never quit Till I get Well, you didn't dance to the stop Why should I? Shooting high Cause I'm Over there, the camera I'm shooting high admit I have no control over that boy. One of Tommy Doris's big hit recordings was the Jimmy McHugh song on the sunny side of the street. One of the featured musicians in Tommy's band was Skeets Herford. We're very, very proud to have Skeets as a member of our musical family, and here he is.
beautiful Jimmy McHugh song. And you notice how everybody joins in. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hollywood musical A Date with Judy gave us this next pretty Jimmy McHugh song. And you'll hear the lovely voice of Kathy Sullivan. It's a most unusual day Be like throwing my worries away As an old native-born Californian would say It's a most unusual day There's a most unusual sky Not a sign of a cloud passing by and if I want to sing, throw my heart in the ring, it's a most unusual day. There are people meeting people, there is sunshine everywhere. There are people greeting people, and the feeling of spring in the air. It's a most unusual time. I keep feeling my temperature climb If my heart won't behave in the usual way Well, there's only one thing to say It's a most unusual, most unusual, most unusual day There are people meeting people There is sunshine Spring in the air, in the air. It's a most unusual time. I keep feeling my temperature climb. If my heart won't behave in the usual way, well, there's only one thing to say. It's a most unusual, most unusual, most unusual day. Jimmy McHugh teamed up with Dorothy Fields to write the words for the Jerome Kern melody. Lovely to look at. Gentlemen, one and two and uh... <laughs> I just love watching Mr. Welk lead the orchestra, especially when they play Lovely to Look At. Coming up, the Welk Orchestra plays I'm in the Mood for Love. The Aldridge sisters and the Otwell twins sing When My Sugar Walks Down the Street. And the beautiful Rolna English sings Don't Blame Me. And speaking of Rolna English, I'll visit with her at the end of the show. Now, let's go back. Our Jimmy McHugh show continues with a Bob Ballard arrangement of the all-time favorite I'm in the Mood for Love, George Cates. Let's have it.
Alan, George, and fellows. I must just give George a compliment because he has really developed a beautiful band from here. Thank you so very much, George. Timmy McCure, let's, let's give George a little hand. That's the idea. <laughs> Timmy McCure wrote his first big hit in 1924. And of course, 1924 brings back memories of the day I left the farm for the music business. Let's see how the Aldrich sisters and the Oddwell twins handle this old timer. from Knoxville, Tennessee, and the two Otwell twins from Tulia, Texas. That's it. Let's see how many of you folks remember this next all-time favorite. Jimmy Roberts is going to refresh your memory with Bob Smale at the piano. Your eyes are blue, your kisses too. I never knew what they could do. I can't believe that you're in love with me You're telling everyone I know I'm on your mind each place you go They can't believe that you're in love with me Far above I just can't imagine That you love me And after all Is said and done To tell the truth You're the only one I can't believe That you're in love with me with me I can't believe that you're in love with me Here's a wonderful combination of music by Jimmy McHugh, words by Dorothy Fields, and the great voice of our lovely Rana.
Gentlemen, I'd like to give you my impression of the great Bill Bojangles Robinson doing his famous step dance to the Jimmy McHugh song, Doing the New Lowdown. Take it away, George. been with us 14 years 14 years you know there's one step that that you have never done on my show and it's very easy let me just oh, show okay. it to you this is kind of a wall stop like this here oh i get the idea you don't have to practice it now just learn it for next week <laughs> well always we're always so grateful to our very good friend sheila and harold schaefer of north dakota for 
sending us Tom Netherton to he's been with us now for six years. Tom has become so popular in the religious field. We're going to move away from our theme and ask uh, him to sing a, a request, a, a re song that's been requested so often for us, God is Alive. Will you sing it first, Tom? Flowers still bloom in the springtime. Raindrops still make them grow. Autumn still follows the summer. A child still wishes for snow. Old folks grow tired and leave us. But each day new babies arrive. Someone makes all of this happen. It's so clear that God is alive. Boys still grow up to be soldiers, and wars breed hatred and fear. But wars are started by people who just don't believe. God is here Somehow Some still deny him And they're saying That God is dead Yet man has come And man has gone And still his world lives on and on His love will survive Yes, God Connie found a Jimmy McHugh song that's nicely suited to her singing style. Anna Connie, let's hear it. Anna Connie, and a 
it looks a little bit like we may have another dance couple on the show. Like many musicians, Bob Havens enjoys playing Jimmy McHugh's songs. Listen to this great trombone man from Quincy, Illinois. The song, Digga Digga Doo. Listening to Jamie McHugh's music is a lovely way to spend an evening. Gentlemen, ah. <laughs> enjoyed the songs of Jimmy McHugh. Our special guest is every songwriter's dream singer, and she's been a favorite with the Lawrence Welk Orchestra since she joined the show back in 1969. Please welcome Ralna English. Well, thanks, Mary Lou. That was awfully nice. Well, thank you, Ralna. Does wow. looking at this show bring back any memories for you? You know, it does bring back memories. That uh, Most of my memories are good, but uh, th this time in my life was a tough time. This was done in 1980. 80 and 81, I had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of emotional stuff in my life going on, so I remember all that, but it was a good show, wasn't it? It, sure it is a good is. show. Well, this has been an especially gratifying time for you in your life. You just had a special of your very own, Ron English from My Heart, air yes. nationally on public television. I've come a long way since 1980. How did that come about? <laughs> and I have such a happy life, and uh, well, the special, you know, we worked on this for over a year, Mary Lou, and um, it, the idea came about because I did a concert at the Sundome in Phoenix with a huge uh, symphony orchestra and they had these big screens on either side of the stage projecting me performing and Susie Dowdy the national publicist longtime national publicist with the uh, for the Lawrence Welk 
uh, television show on e OETA was there that evening backstage and she was watching it on the monitors from backstage and she said when she saw it she just knew that it had to be a PBS TV special and I said yeah right <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh, it was amazing a, a, a few months later we got it uh, I talked to uh, the conductor of the Charlotte Philharmonic and he wanted to put me into their season schedule uh, and uh, we met with them Susie and I met with with him and and his people and we decided that uh, we would do this concert it would be called Roma English from my heart we would tape it uh, in Charlotte North Carolina with the wonderful Charlotte Philharmonic and Albert Mooring conducting and uh, we had a huge we're going to have a huge gospel choir and dancers. And uh, then we kind of wanted to test the water, so we went to a couple of PBS national meetings to see how they would, you know, if they would accept something like this or how they would receive it if we were to do this. So, and they were very encouraging. I was so thrilled. And really, when the good folks at uh, PBS fundraising decided to help us fund this, it was just, it was wonderful. But uh, then we went to, came to, OETA and, and asked uh, Bill Thrash and Bob Allen if they would be creative consultants. I went to my good friend Bob Krogstad who did all the orchestrating for the choir and the sym symphony and uh, the Philharmonic and went to Rose Weiss, our wonderful longtime costumer with the Welk Show to see if she'd help me get some costumes. And we did the show in one take, three acts. Uh, that had to that be a nerve-wracking day. It was a nerve-wracking day, Mary Lou. <laughs> I've never experienced anything quite like it. But, you know, I walked out on that stage, and uh, the audience was overwhelming, really. I saw my, my longtime fans filling up the first two rows in the front, and they all, everybody in the whole audience began to stand, even up in the balcony, when I walked out on stage. Oh, and it was, it was like a gust of wind just blew me over. I could hardly go on. I really mean it, but it was a it was a a very magical time for me. Well, you were and also the executive producer on the special, so that had to be a learning experience. <laughs> it was a learning experience, you know, for producing. I was executive producer, and Susie was producer, and we worked so well together. Actually, the the real work began the next day because we stayed over in in uh, North Carolina for ten days to do the editing, and then we came back a month later for another week. To edit some more, and uh, and then of course we had to to uh, get the pledge event uh, going. So we came here to OETA, and dear Bob Allen and Bill Thrash uh, did such a fantastic job on the virtual the uh, pledge event for the fundraisers for all the PBS stations. So uh, it, you know it was just it was just a great grand what did all of time. This, what did this all teach you about yourself? You know that it takes a lot of people <laughs> to pull something off like this, and that I that I was able to to do, actually hold up under this and do it uh, myself. You know, but with all the people that were involved, you know, my Welk family, a lot of them, and then the OT, OETA family, were so helpful to me, and it it really um, it touched my heart that that they were so willing to help me and make this happen and make this so special. Well, as a thank you gift, you and your sisters put together the Rolla English Family Cookbook. Now, I know when the English girls get together and food is involved, it's a labor of love. <laughs> I know firsthand. You do know firsthand. You've been there, haven't you? Well, you know what? We burned up the phone lines between Texas and California and Arizona. For nine months, we felt like we'd had a baby, all three of us, because and we did. This cookbook was our baby. And, uh, you know, it's filled with... Uh, a lot of tradition, our family traditions, as far as cooking at, at, at the holiday seat and the birthdays and the wonderful things that, uh, and oh, I've got to tell you, my Aunt Pearl is a baker, and my mom's sister, and Aunt Pearl, in the second and third acts of my special, I her earrings, if you oh. watch it, and I've got her earrings on today. These are a little different, but oh, they match my little top. And so I decided to wear those today for Aunt Pearls, for you, Aunt Pearl. But uh, she was a wonderful baker, and my mother was a great cook. Your coconut cake recipe. I, there's a great story that goes with that. You know what? Oh, you know what? I was a little girl, and I can still remember 
uh, I was about 10 years old, and Mother started making that cake, and we were, we'd moved to Lubbock, the big city, you know, <laughs> from from Spur. And uh, Mother started. She gets a. She got a coconut from the grocery store. She broke it open. We drank the milk from the coconut that morning, and then she started grating the coconut and preparing her beautiful big white cake that she made with an orange filling. And all through the day, we would keep coming back into the kitchen to watch her create this fabulous work of art. A whole day of It was of a hair. work of art. And then when she finally had it finished, we, we just wanted to look at it. Oh. You know, we couldn't wait to taste it, but we really just wanted to sit and, and admire it because Mother worked so hard, you know, and it was such a special time. And oh, we had a lot of special times like that when I was growing up. My mother was a wonderful cook, and, and I hope everybody enjoys So are you. This. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jane but and Sharon. Jane is a fabulous. She's like a gourmet cook, and then Sharon is a great baker like Aunt Pearl. And, and uh, you know, we're all we're very proud of our little cookbook. We've all watched Julie grow up on the show over the years, the Christmas shows when you'd bring her on. What's she doing now? Oh, we're so proud of her, Guy and I. I just can't tell you how proud we are of her. We think teachers need to be paid at least as much as basketball players. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not even talking football here, you know, just basketball or whatever. But she, she's a great teacher. She taught kindergarten this year. And next year she's going to teach first grade. And when she started out this year, you know, a lot of her kids didn't even know how to hold a pencil in their hand. They didn't know their last names. And she has brought these children so far. And um, we're so proud of her because her class has just come up and learned so much this year. And I saw it from my own, with my own eyes in the last couple of weeks I went to, to visit her class. And they're just lovely, lovely children. And she's done such a phenomenal job to get them prepared for first grade. And uh, we're just proud of her. Can you tell? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> How are you liking life in Arizona? This lifestyle that I have for myself in Arizona is so different from any other that I ever imagined in my life. I didn't know that you could have this kind of a life. And my life is so beautiful. How do you see it's the, the next chapter of your life? I just have more of good things, more of these wonderful things that have come into my life. And for, it's such a late date. <laughs> you know, here I am, you know, in my 60s, and I'm, all this is happening to me. But, uh, and my, I have a, a real sweet, person in my life. I'm just blessed. I'm totally blessed right now. God has really, really blessed me in my life. Well, that's how we feel about you. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Rhonda. Thanks, honey. I love you. Love you too, dear. And thank you so much for being a part of our family. So until next time, as Lawrence always said, keep a song in your heart. I'm Senator Roy Blunt. Missourians from all over the state have made history in so many ways, and we can take pride in their stories. Two of America's greatest generals grew up just 50 miles apart. World War I Army Commander John Blackjack Pershing came from Laclede, while Moberly's Omar Bradley led U.S. ground forces to victory in Europe in World War II. The State Historical Society has more stories of historic Missourians. Find them at kcpt.org. On Masterpiece. Welcome to the CP Fair. Who's that boy? Adam. Good day, Mr. Adam. Pleasure to meet you in such different circumstances. Oh. Wake up, Alfred. You are British propaganda. Indian Summers on Masterpiece. Sunday at 8 on KCPT. Sustain your brain. Become a sustaining member of KCPT today. It's quick, easy on your budget, and encourages the spirit of lifelong learning on public television. Hoorah! 
Go to kcpt.org to become a sustaining member right now. Next time on New Tricks, the team begins.